I don't know, man. It, it seems like J.K. Dobbins and the Ravens are in sort of this weird place right now. And hey, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's coincidental. I don't know. But stuff seems like it's really strange right now. Now, of course, um, media day. Media day, that's when all the players, they showed up and stuff. They were taking the pictures. They were shooting the videos and whatnot. They were doing everything for media. And J.K. Dobbins was there, and we talked about it that day. That, that, that was a nice little shock, a, ni a nice news for the Ravens that J.K. Dobbins has showed up. And I was like, all right, well, we're going to be seeing J.K. Dobbins at minicamp and whatnot. And, and he was making the cuts for media day and all that, doing his running back stuff. And I was like, all right, let's go. Then we see no signs of him at minicamp at all. Nothing. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, okay. Uh, Todd Munkin said that he was hoping to see J.K. Dobbins out there, give him something to get excited about. He said, run a wheel route or something. But no, there was no J.K. Dobbins there. But that ain't really what had me tripping that much. It was really uh, John Harbaugh today uh, when he was asked about J.K. Dobbins. He said he had, he had expected him to practice, but it just wasn't in the cards. And it was just the, the way that Harbaugh said it to me. It just seemed like there was just seemed like there was a disconnect uh, between him and J.K. Dobbins. Uh, and Harbaugh, like Harbaugh, the coach when and he's shown it to us before. I mean, he only been coaching the Ravens for what since two thousand eight. So to the, it's for what, 14, 15 years. So it's been a little while. So I think we, we, a lot of us kind of know Harbaugh, maybe. But um, if he's like, if he's in sync with you, if he's in tune with you, whatnot, if he got your back or whatnot, he going to hold it down. He going to hold it down. But if y'all not on the same page, even if it's temporarily, um, a lot of times it can be shown through his words, through the way that he speaks about you. And that's what it seemed like today. Listen to the press again. It, let me know if it's just me, but that's what it seemed like today. It seemed like there's just a disconnect right now um, because he sort of made it seem like, well, hey, I I was thinking it was gonna be one thing, but then it ended up being something completely different. So we'll see. He said, uh, he said he'll probably be ready for training camp, so that's good. That's nice. Um, but I don't know. It just seemed like they're in a real weird spot. And again. Um, we got, we got to go back to the very end of last season, how last season ended. With J.K. with his frustration, talking about how he wanted to be the guy. Like, he said he was tired of holding it back. He said he talked to some people on the sidelines and stuff, but he tired of holding it back. I need to be the guy. And that's, of course, when he didn't really get that much work uh, in the playoffs. And then, like, especially in the red zone and stuff, y'all know how it went. We remember. But, I don't know, it seemed like they're in a weird spot. But then even the other day... Um, in a presser the other day, somebody asked uh, John Harbaugh like how J.K. Dobbins would fit into the new offense. And I forget exactly what John Harbaugh said. But his answer to me, again, let me know if it's just me or if y'all saw or heard it too. But his answer to me made it seem like uh, like they would really have to find a spot for him. It didn't feel like uh, J.K. Dobbins would be the guy. Now, I was, we've talked about it before on here. I was just talking to my guy, Jason, about it the other day, too. Um, I feel like with, with uh, J.K. Dobbins, um, oh, no, I was talking to my guy, uh, David, about it, my guy, David. Uh, but I was telling him with, with J.K. Dobbins, it, it sucks because it seemed like he was getting ready to get the keys a couple years ago. It seemed like it was getting ready to be his offense. Well, not his offense, but he was going to be the feature running back for the East Baltimore Ravens. That's what it seemed like. But then, what was it, 2020? I think it was 2020. No, 2021. 2021. Yeah, yeah, 2021. Um, but it seemed like it was, they were going to be like, all right, JK, here. It's all you, baby. It's all yours. Uh, but then he got the injury on the, the week three of the preseason against the Commanders on that screen pass. Uh, well, that ended his season because that, that's where it was really like, all right, it's, it's getting ready to be JK's time. But then that messed him up. And then last year, uh, it, it just seemed from that point on, like the Ravens were like, all right, we like almost like they couldn't trust him or something like that um, to be the guy, to hold it down all the way. Uh, and because after Ray Rice, like Ravens have done, they've done a, a lot of running back back of me. I mean, they, they did have a Justin Forsett. He I guess he was the guy for them. They had the Alex Collins. Um, but besides those two, Mm, it's been a lot of running back by a committee. 
Uh, and just right when it seemed like they were going to go away from that a bit. Well, they did have Mark Ingram, too. I mean, Mark Ingram did his thing. But that was running back by committee, but Mark Ingram was the guy running back for them. Um, so I guess they have done, had, had a, a, a main guy here and there. Uh, but it seemed like J.K. Dobbins was getting ready to be their next main guy. But then the injuries happened, and that seemed to be uh, the end of that. But I just really wonder what's going on right now. And, and hopefully, hopefully this is just nothing. Hopefully this is me just overthinking something right now. Who knows? But um, again, with the tweets, the tweets, I hate to go back to those tweets, but we got to go back to those tweets with J.K. Dobbins talking about his future with the Ravens and stuff like Stuff like that you don't just say out of nowhere. Stuff like that you don't just say for no reason. Stuff like that you don't just say out the blue. Like, oh, you know what? Randomly, I, I, I want to tweet about my, my future with the Baltimore Ravens. You know, okay, let's have at it. No. So, again, I wonder if there was a, uh, a conversation about that. Now, um, my guy, uh, my guy Dev, he had, uh, he had hit me up uh, a couple days ago uh, just talking about running backs in general. Um, and how it just, they, they get treated like nothing nowadays. Uh, and, and let's look to, to what he said. He said, um, the running back market is absolutely disgusting. Uh, they really get treated like nothing. Dalvin Cook put up monster numbers in four years and is getting cut for his contract being too big, which really isn't for a guy who is a top five running back. Uh, I feel really bad to know uh, to how the, run the NFL treats running backs basically after your rookie year. You may never even see another contract. Well, after your rookie contract, I think you meant. I said Leonard Fournette, 27 years old and still free agent. Zeke, Dalvin Cook, uh, only has interest. He hasn't even been brought in for contract negotiations with anyone. James Robinson just got cut, who was on a two-year, $4 million deal, who's 24 years old. I feel like something should change for these guys. Maybe some more money on contracts or incentives after you've been out the league. I don't know. But with how running backs uh, are being treated, how do you think the Ravens will address J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards with expiring deals soon? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. And I told him, like, like with running backs, that's unfortunately uh, the market right now, man. That's, that's the market right now. The, 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 and not even just the, just the, the NFL in general. Um, because the way that they look at running backs is like, all right, you're nice, whether we drafted you, undrafted you, but you're nice. Okay, you did this for us. You made some plays. Okay, cool. Oh, you're getting a little expensive now. I uh, think we can still get some good production. Out of a running back, but for a lot cheaper. So a lot of teams will go the undrafted free agent route. A lot of teams will go the late round pick route. Like even oh, Isaiah, oh, I, from the Chiefs. I know I'm messing up his name. Pacheco? I, I, I know I messed up his name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. My apologies. I think he was like a sixth or seventh round pick for the Chiefs. And he ended up starting over Clyde edwards Elia. Clyde edwards Elia was a first round pick, um, but he was a sixth or seventh round pick. Ended up helping them run their way to the Super Bowl. I, I mean, they did a lot more than running, but he was a big part of what they did. So teams are looking around and like, hey, we, we can get production out of backs and we ain't got to pay for it like that. Oh, yeah, sign us up all day. Even Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram was on a, a three-year, five million per, a three mil, $15 million deal. Three-year, $15 million deal. So five mil per. And Ravens cut him. I said, oh, oh, <laughs> you, you, you ain't got to worry about finishing that one. Bye. Because the other running backs are getting paid cheaper, and they could get more production out of them. They're like, oh, Mark Ingram, okay, see you. Love you. Thank you for everything. Big trust. But see you. And that's the nature of the business, man. That's the business with, with, with running backs. But as far as um, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, I really don't know. I, I, I really don't know. And it's, uh, it's something to think about. Because, again, both of them are at the end of their deals. J.K. Dobbin in last year, last year his contract. Gus Edwards, they reworked this year, but I believe he's still in the last year of his contract. So things could be changing big time. Remember, Gus Edwards, undrafted free agent. They signed him as an undrafted rookie free agent. J.K. Dobbins was probably the most investment that they spent at running back in a long time, and him being a second-round pick. Other guys that they brought in, Justice Hill, he was a fourth-round pick. Um... Alex Collins, they signed him off of Seattle's practice squad, I believe. Um, Terrence West was a free agent. I know I'm like skipping like a generation of running backs for the Ravens because I'll be forgetting. But uh, Justin Forsett, he was a uh, he was a free agent. 
Um, I know I'm just I'm I'm like missing so many people. Like there's there's this big gap in my mind right now that I just can't remember a lot of the running backs that the Ravens had uh, over the years. But oh well, Mark Ingram he was a free agent. Uh, but yeah, man. But as far as J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, I don't even know what to think about what's gonna happen with them. I, I have no clue, no clue at all. It's funny uh, while we're talking about this, my guy. Um, I got Tariq sent me a video from Good Morning Football. I don't know if y'all caught it. And uh, Leonard Fournette was on there. Leonard Fournette was on there, and he was talking about Odell Beckham Jr. and stuff. And he was on there with Peter Schrags and, uh, and two other people. I forget who the other two people were. My apologies. Um, but they wanted to talking about OBJ and stuff. He was like, yeah, last time OBJ, um, last time he was playing and stuff, he looked good. And he was making dudes look silly. And he, he was only doing it with one leg. But now he's healthy and whatnot, so... They're talking about how they were looking forward to him with the Ravens and stuff. Da, 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 da. And the, one of the co-hosts, a, a woman, she asked, uh, I, again, I forgot who, what her name was, my apologies. But she was like, man, Leonard Fournette, that, you, you, you're grinning. You're really smiling about OBJ and the Ravens. And Peter Shraggs was, and Leonard Fournette, was, he's like, ah. <laughs> and Peter Shraggs was like, he's like, oh, that, that's because the Ravens, that's because they've been calling him. And then he's like, <laughs> then they changed the subject real quick. And I was like, whoa. Cause and, and I told my guy Tyreek, Tariq, I was like, they, they really just slipped that in there like that? And he's like, yeah, hey, they did. I said, hey, I don't know. Are they really calling Leonard Fournette? I guess we'll see eventually. But um, I just thought that was interesting. And then later on in that same segment, um, Leonard Fournette, they, they were talking, still talking about the Ravens. And then uh, Shrag was like, oh, he, he's like, Leonard Fournette, he's going to be probably, he's probably going to get signed by the end of this segment. He's like, oh, is that, is that Eric DaCosta? Is that, is that DaCosta on your line? He's like, he's going to end up playing with the Ravens or something like that. But anyway, they, they kind of transformed it into a joke. But it's one of those things where it's like, are they joking? Or are they, I, don't, I don't know. I guess it's one of them things we'll just have to wait and see and find out. But again, back to my guy, Dave, his, um, his point about the running backs. That's just where the NFL is right now, man. They, they put so much emphasis on it being a passing league, which it is. Um, but running the ball is still important. But it's in a different place than it was years ago. That's not what the NFL wants. That's not what the NFL focuses on. The NFL is different. The NFL is forever changing. Um, you still should be able to run the ball, and it's nice when you can run the ball, but the focus is on passing. Um, so with running backs, again, they're treated like an afterthought. Even with fullbacks, too. You think about fullbacks. Um, and, and Patrick Ricard, I think that they said he's going to be starting training camp on the, uh, the pup uh, because he's having, what did, did, did they say, hip surgery? They said he's having some. I forgot what, what it was. but So he's going to start the training camp on the physically unable to perform list. Um, but even fullbacks. Fullbacks is like a dying breed. A lot of teams don't even carry fullback anymore. A lot of teams, they don't even do it. Sometimes they, they will use, some teams will just use no fullback. Sometimes they'll use a tight end as a fullback in certain situations and whatnot. But a lot of teams, they don't even carry fullbacks. So it's just, with running the ball, again, it's, NFL, is, they, they, they just change so much. With the rule changes and whatnot, it's um, it's just different than what it used to be. Even five, six years ago, especially 10, 11 years ago, it's much different than what it used to be. So, yeah, man, just thought it was a very, uh, very interesting topic that my guy Dad brought up because it's something that we think about a lot, um, and we see it. We we see how the NFL operates. We see how the Ravens operate at the position and whatnot. Um, so it's just something that's important to uh to keep in mind. It's funny though too. Speaking about my guy Tariq. Um, I had told him a couple years ago, I told him that, like, look, man, I, I just, the way that the NFL been changing, the way that the, with the rules and stuff, I could see them taking a the kickoff out. I could see them taking a the kickoff out in the next two to three years. And I told him this about maybe, like, three years ago. I told him I could see the NFL taking a the kickoff out just because they, they talk about safety, this and safety, and even though a lot of the stuff they do is, is not safe, but I could see them taking that out. And they haven't taken it out. So it lasted past the two, three years and whatnot. But I don't know, it still does seem like it could be trending that way, especially with the new fair catch rule, which is it's like, ah, uh, really? Uh, but anyway, so we'll see. But team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. As far as J.K. Dobbins specifically, I really hope that all this, whatever it is, gets cleared up. And hopefully it's just a bunch of nothing. Hopefully it's just me overthinking. Hopefully it's just a bunch of nothing. But to me, it don't seem like it's a bunch of nothing. 
it just seemed like they are in a very strange place to me. That's what it seems like as far as Ravens and J.K. Dobbins and whatnot. So, again, hopefully whatever it is, if it is something, it can get worked out. Um, and we'll see. We'll just see how things go. Team Keep It Clean, I love you all so much. I appreciate you all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And, hey, that's it. The minicamp is over. Next time you see these Baltimore Ravens, it will be for training camp. So that is towards the middle end of July. So, yeah, should be fun. Love y'all. We're still going to keep y'all locked in throughout the entire summer, throughout their entire break. Even though they're going to be getting a break, we still got y'all backs, man. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And just like the Ravens are for about a month and a half, we out.